Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of I Shake My Head with Lisa and Sam. Hey. What up? How's it going? <laughs> what, Feliz Navidad? <laughs> no, no, that's wrong. Not that okay, one. We have to stop using words we don't know. Okay. And that <laughs> I'm going to say to you, yeah. not to me. But you know what? Because I use words I know. I know. You but, do not. But just say it. It just rolls off my tongue. Feliz Navidad. Yeah, but it's the wrong month. season. I know that. It's the wrong season. I know that. It's just wrong. Melakaliki <laughs> Maka. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, because now I've got that song in my head. Way to go. Yeah, right? <laughs> Uh, I know. So uh, apparently right now I'm thinking of Christmas. <laughs> and Go figure. And yeah, It's and 34 degrees outside in Saskatoon. <laughs> and you know what? I've had to think of it as being cool all day. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you it's know what? Hot. I had I was I was not feeling super excited about anything later like this afternoon. No. When the hail came. Yeah, yeah we didn't get hail on my side of the oh, city. Oh my god. Yeah. The hail broke Betty. The, the hail didn't break Betty. They the hail damaged Betty. Damaged Betty. And Betty is my car. Yes, but the beauty. And I love my car. I know that Samantha, but the beauty, like I told you, you you turn that frown upside down, <laughs> and you remember that Betty can be fixed. Betty can be fixed. Right. Your day, however, cannot be fixed. My day was horrific, and guess what? <laughs> if you turned your frown upside. down. I turned my frown upside down, and I shot sunshine out my ass for the rest of it. Right? Because that's what I do. Because you know what? That's what was different when you came to the car. <laughs> the sunshine coming out of your ass. ass. Right? Because that's what I had to do to get through my day. Because you know what, Samantha? Oh I'm Lisa God. Gibson, and that's what I do. That's true. Right? Remember who you are. Remember who you are. You're Lisa Gibson. I am Lisa Gibson. And Lisa Gibson turns that frown upside down and, and s- makes the day all that much better. And blows sunshine out of her ass. And then bitches about it. <laughs> To herself, <laughs> in her back room. This is true. For about half an hour. Yeah. And then, but better. Look at me now. And then ate a hot dog. That's what... That's to make yourself feel better. I did, right? Yeah, I did. Street hot dogs. Hot, hot dog cart. Two thumbs up. It was so good. The softest bun. Ooh. I know, right? You like so soft. I'm like, you like some soft buns, do you, Lisa? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't like big butts. <laughs> and I cannot lie. There. No, don't sing. I'm not going to sing. I was going to talk it. Okay. Yeah. I was going to talk it. Oh, so that's our day, folks. There's our day. Betty got hurt and Lisa had a shitty day. Shitty day. <laughs> but better now. Yeah. But you know what? You know why it's better now, Samantha? Why? Because I'm hanging out with you. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. Blind, more, i got to put my sunglasses on. There's sunshine coming out of my ass. There's more sunshine coming out of my ass right now, friends. <laughs> oh. There you go. Lisa. Get it off your chest. Okay. Just deal with okay samantha just tell the podcasting friends what our topic is about lisa's upset because i chose the the topic i'm not upset that you chose the topic because i mean it made you do like research i'm not upset that you chose the topic samantha Mm -hmm. i'm upset that you care so much about the topic well i i was curious okay tell them what you're curious about (laughs) i wanted to know what a millennial was and then i was curious as to what that made us yeah. So, friends of the bodca- pro- er, podcast, podcast. <laughs> so what happens when every now and then, you know, oh, insightful Sam, right? She just comes up with these things. And I'm like, God, really? Like, you don't know? So I, no, so I, then, mm-hmm. so to humor her, I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's do, you need let's to make do me some sound research. Right now? Let's do some research and let's learn a little bit about this topic. So let's, so Samantha, let's do that. Let's put on our learning caps, Lisa. Yeah. I did. When I started to do my research, I put on my learning cap, Samantha. And you know what I learned? What? Too much, too much, too much, too much reading was involved. And it felt like I was doing a homework assignment. Yes. I would like to tell you all that Lisa doesn't like to read. Doesn't mean she can't read. I can read. (laughs) I have the skill set. And I can do it. She hates to read. But I hate doing it. Yes. So I, however, I I enjoy it. So I'm going to do my best, friends of the podcast, to keep Miss School... A little less factual than what she probably thinks that she needs to be. I'm not going to get all factual up in your grill. Right? Because she's Miss School. Yeah. And I was like, Miss... Too uh, cool for school. Skipping school. (laughs) Right? I believe you went skiing once. Did you not, We went skiing. We went to the beach. (laughs) We went afternoon drinking. (laughs) Right? You name it, we did it. We we wrote our own notes. Right? (laughs) 
Right. And it was a my small... My mom said, I can have... skip school today. Right. And I remember the secretary of the school saying, doesn't look like your dad's signature. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> right. Busted. Guess I'll be staying. You know, I'm surprised that you thought you could get away with that. Yeah. But a, t- a group of... A ton of us did. Oh, my God. A ton of us did. That does not make you smart. Well, you know what? I'm, like, worldly smart. I never claimed to be school smart. I was a solid C. Solid C <laughs> slash sometimes dipping down and even into, like... Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, but I got through just like you. I graduated with honors. Awesome. Where'd that get you? <laughs> it got you reading about millennials, Samantha. That's where it got you. Oh, shut up. All right, so you wanted to know what a millennial is. Well, I was just curious. About All right, them. so tell me what you learned. They're very interesting people. I agree. Mm-hmm. They're interesting. Agree. There's two generations there's yes. Y and Z, which they've grouped together to call millennials. Okay. And they're interesting kids because they've grown up with all of this technology around them. Yeah, like they, and it makes them. Yeah. It makes to me. It makes them so much more. They're more in tuned. Yeah. Well, no, not yeah. that, Well, that. Yeah. But they. It seems to make them grow up quicker. I think. I think it matures them a bit. Yeah. Except for the whole Snapchat with the bunny, with the ears. Yeah. Right. Because, because I don't get that. But I think that I think that the millennials. I think that they they observe more because I think they're exposed to more. Yeah, for sure. Right? Way Whereas, more than we ever were. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know? I mean, we're considered Generation X. Yeah. And your parents and my parents were considered baby boomers. No, I would, you know what? My parents would... <laughs> I would disagree. <laughs> my parents were not... <laughs> well, you did say. <laughs> right? My parents were not baby boomers. Right? I think that baby boomers were your parents... Because your parents were age appropriate parents. My parents were a little they were a little quick to that party. Right? So my parents were <laughs> They were quick to that party. They were a little quick to that party. My Wendy <laughs> Wendy and Gordon were a little quick to that party. Right? Whereas Larry and Sheila they, they, they followed the rules age appropriately. Well they got married first. <laughs> right? right? Exactly. You know? So that's a bit Sorry, not to bring up your family's past. Right? <laughs> Keep the skeleton in the closet, Samantha. Leave the skeletons where they stay. Oh, I think my parents were more Generation Jones. Yeah, oh, right? from what you've told me? Yeah, because, for sure. because so your parents were baby boomers. Generation Jones was just a pinch below that. And, and, and Generation Jones was, was all about keeping up with the Joneses, uh-huh. right? Yeah. So if you have that, I want that. If, if you're doing that, I need to do Lisa, that. Lisa, your family had a boat. We had a boat because everybody else had boats. Yes. Right? And you got a car and your sister got a car. Everybody got a car. Everyone had Just a like TV Oprah. in there. You room. get a car, you get a car. <laughs> yeah, we all had a TV. We all had the Nintendo system. We had we all had you that. You had stuff. We had we had stuff. <laughs> Yeah, we had stuff. But, okay. But it's not just about me. Okay, Lisa. All right? All right. I want you to know that I did also some research about the millennials. Woo. Yeah, I know. Right? Like, because I had to. <laughs> <laughs> You're not being graded on it, Lisa. I, Though I will look down upon you if you had not. <laughs> if I came to the table with nothing, don't get me wrong, right? I mean, I'm pretty knowledgeable anyways. I don't need to research everything like you do. I just already know it. Because no. what I learned is I think that I'm part millennial. I'm more in tune. You know what? Everything that I read about a millennial, yeah. and I'm like, oh my, that's sweet. Oh my God, it's yeah. that. Oh my God, she does that. Oh my God, she is that. Oh my God, that's her trait. Oh my God. Right? In my heart, I'm a millennial. Well, because I think you evolved. I have evolved. Mm-hmm. And I think you're a little caveman. No, I'm not. I think you might Don't be. call me a cave. That's really rude. But I'm not trying to be, I'm not saying no, like. that's rude. I'm not saying that you like. like I'm not a caveman. Like, I have a things phone. and kill them. I have I can work an email. I can work on a computer. But I know all. Bit, I know what Snapchat, Twitter, I know. Facebook, and all the other but stuff is. But Smith, it's all just because I, t- I choose not it's all to a little, use it. But the difference is that it's all a little begrudgingly with you. No, it's not begrudgingly. It's a little bit. No, it's not. A wee bit. I really do enjoy my phone. I know you enjoy your phone, but your phone and I like has, Instagram. Yeah, because you can creep. Well, because it's got pretty pictures. Pretty pictures. <laughs> pretty pretty pictures. <laughs> Right, and I learn a little about a lot. You learn, eh, you learn a little. That's the no, problem. No, I learn a little about a lot. Right, whereas we millennials. Oh, oh my right? God! And let's group us yeah. together. We, hi, hi, homie. How are you? We, the only thing that separates me from my millennial friends is, oh my God. is the Snapchat, which I do. Oh. I do the Snapchat, but I don't. I, I don't create the characters. I don't want to look like a squirrel. I don't want to have bunny ears. Okay, the day that you do that, I'm never going. I'm to. I'm going to make fun of you. Fun of you yeah, for absolutely, the rest of your right? Life. Absolutely. I I begrudgingly downloaded Snapchat because 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 people were using it, so I was curious. Mm-hmm. But yeah, hi. Don't don't make me don't make me. I don't want to be a bunny. 
I don't want to be a squirrel. And you shouldn't. No, right? I don't want to swap faces with you. I don't want to do any of that stuff, right? So, so that's so that's yeah. that's where the difference between myself and the millennials lie. Mm-hmm. But I think you're not quite a millennial because I don't think you're quite as socially uh, responsible responsible as they are because they are, from what I read, yeah. they're very socially responsible. And I'm like, that's not Lisa. She doesn't no. really care about the environment. I care because you, but you I don't told me on many occasions uh-huh. that you would like us to revert back to the '70s so you could throw your garbage out the window. Well, just because it's just sometimes easier. <laughs> Right? And then it just kind of goes... Because my, that's what we did. Yeah. That's and to, what we did. And to any, any friends of the podcast that are in our age group from like 40 and up, don't tell me right now that you're not thinking back going like, oh my God, uh-huh. we did. Uh-huh. Kids, give your garbage to... Pass your garbage to the front of the car. Gord, throw it out. Right? <laughs> so either you'd throw it out the window as you were driving... <laughs> Right? Or if you were stopped, it went underneath the car. Yeah. Right? Oh, my God. I'm not saying we're proud of that. No. But it's a fact. It's not something we grew up with. We didn't grow up with, like, no. like, like oh, paper and plastic. Our generation, Generation X, is, is called the MTV generation. Yeah. Because so we, we grew up with videos yeah. and and Walkmans and Ghetto Blasters, and that's our generation yeah. of things. Exactly. So, <laughs> I would sit... In front of the TV for hours mm-hmm. watching videos. Yep. Because it was so entertaining. Exactly. And then out came the Cindy Lauper hair, yep. out came the Madonna shit. Yeah. Whereas it's funny because. So that, we were influenced by that. Yeah, we were influenced by that. But my millennial friends, right? At work, oh Callie, Callie and <laughs> Rayelle, they're my, they're my millennial people, right? <laughs> and they're good kids. My millennials, good kids. And so they don't necessarily watch the videos, but they're all about the YouTube. Oh, see? Callie told me that. Which makes sense. Yeah, all yeah. about the YouTube. So, Because she follows MT- our blog, but she said when when she found out that she could see it on YouTube, oh, even better. Oh, Because okay. she likes YouTube. That makes sense. So, that's like so their videos. Their videos is YouTube. Yeah. And I like YouTube. One more, one more, one more notch for me no, and my I, millennials. I actually go to YouTube quite a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I like that. Yeah. Again, it's because I think I'm more about the visual. On Twitter, I, I can't love be bothered. Twitter. Love, 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 love can't Twitter. Be can't live without Twitter. Yeah, and Facebook. I don't give a shit how long ago I knew you. I'm not willing to connect with you. Well, and you know, and that's what makes us different. So, friends of the podcast, even though that comment sounded like friend, Samantha is not very friendly, <laughs> she is friendly. To know me is to love me. <laughs> right? She is friendly. I am you know, friendly. I. But I definitely think that um, I think the millennials are more are more worldly conscious. Yes. I, I think, think they know what's going so. on. I think we know what's going on. But, uh, but hi, I'm a millennial. Of course I do. Oh, shut up. You know? But I think but that we they're... Didn't. But back in our but day... They want to make change, though, too. They're very... But yeah. they're not like... They're not like the people... The generation of the 70s. The people that lived in the 70s and were... Fight war, fight Vietnam, and like smoking pot and sleeping together. <laughs> yeah, they're not those guys. They're not because they are willing to work with the system. They know they have to change. Yeah, and they want to make new things, but they also know they have to work with the old as well. So right. they're not. They're not radical. They're they're willing to work with what they have, but yeah. also to create new among that. As yeah, well, which is very different. That is very different, Samantha. I know. I agree with that. So I threw some facts at you, Lisa. Don't fall asleep. Oh, okay. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Got my sunglasses on right now. You couldn't even tell my eyes were closed. <laughs> And in my mind, I had timed out. Oh, God. <laughs> no. But, no. You, but you know what else You know what else really happened with our generation, Samantha? Mm-hmm. Was the latchkey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I coined the phrase, I'm sure. I was the first latchkey kid. You had Grandma Lowe. I had Grandma Lowe, who kept an eye on me, right? But my parents were never around. My mm-hmm. dad was always working. My mom was with figure skating stuff and with my sister. And I was just like, okay, going to baseball, <laughs> letting myself in, like going to school, making myself breakfast, right? <laughs> right? Oh, it's lunchtime. Better go to a friend's. I was like, all those things. Oh, uh-huh. it's time for a snack. Better find Grandma Lowe. Good thing you had Grandma Lowe. Save my bacon. Well, she made you a better person, Lisa. She certainly did, Samantha. Saved I mean, you from the saved you from jail. <laughs> she certainly did. Taught me how to ride a bike. <laughs> she did. She made sure you didn't become a delinquent. She did. She did. <laughs> and, I, and I don't think it was always easy for her, right? But that, but that was the whole latchkey thing, right? Yeah. So, but but interestingly, today they still have latchkey kids, but there's like an age limit on it. Hey, what? Yeah, like you can't be like as a, as a kid. Like I don't think you can be left alone till you're like 14 or something. Ooh. Yeah. Whereas we were like left alone at like four. Huh. Yeah. True. Right? Like, yeah. we were young and left alone. Well, because... But when my, you think back, it's like... Yeah. Probably we're too young. 
maybe. We were maybe too well, young. Well, but my sister's two years older than me. Yeah. So she would have, well, may, oh, but maybe. Would, but she wasn't babysitting you. No. No. She was, just because she was around doesn't mean that she was like your babysitter. True. Right? Huh. Yeah. Look at us getting all I know. up in other people's stuff. Yeah. So I think that we were, so the latchkey generation, and the reason why that all, that all kind of, that movement kind of occurred was because the divorce rates were rising. Well, they're not great now. They're not great now, but back when we were back in our generation, like I only had one friend that was from a divorced family. Really? Only one. Yeah. And and also, Mama had to go back to work. Oh yeah. Right. So yeah, that's yeah. why you need to have the latch key. It's weird how it all kind of starts. Right? right. Yeah. So that was what it was. That was a big thing too. Very different for baby boomers to watch that happen. I'm sure. Yeah, probably. Right? Yeah. Because they wouldn't. They would have stayed together regardless. But baby boomers now must just have such angst. <laughs> right. Well, and the reason, another reason why I wanted to get to know my millennials yeah. is because are they going to take care of us? Do we need to worry? Well, you know what? My are they going to be like the responsible adults? Hopefully, my, my two look after the seniors. <laughs> my two millennials that I know, you know what? They're good people. I think they're going to. I, th- I think they got everybody's back. Actually, the millennials that I know at work too are actually very, yeah. very good people. So I think maybe sometimes they get they get they kind of get the bad end of the stick. No, well, maybe. Right? Yeah, because from what I read, the traits that they have, they're they're, um, narcissistic and... um, Narcissistic and... Self-centered. Self-centered. And very... It's... They basically, they coined themselves Generation Me, Mm. which makes me think, "Mm, that's... Oh, Entitled. That's the other one that's Yeah, but I think Generation Me is okay. Yeah. Right? I'm just curious to what they... If if they, they are like this... Yeah. What do you think they're entitled to? I don't think they know what they're entitled to yet. No. <laughs> right? <laughs> we're discovering it. We're not sure, but yeah. we think we are, but we're just not, we haven't quite yeah. got there. But we know it's something. It's something. It's something. Entitled yeah. to live, breathe, work, have well, a car. if it was back in our day, we were entitled to whatever my mama said you were entitled to. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same that way now. I don't know if that theory still applies, <laughs> you know, oh, but I think that, um, but I'm sure it's a give and take. But I think that they get, I think that sometimes they get judged harshly because of what they do, right? Like yeah. everybody's like, they're always on their phone. They're always playing their game. Well, you know, we were always with our Walkman. And when somebody would talk to you, you'd lift up your one little foamy ear <laughs> and you'd be like, what? And you could right? tear us away from the TV when the videos, right? The stuff was on there. Exactly. You know? Right? We played our music Mom, too loud in our bedrooms. Yeah. Mom, leave me alone. Send your loppers on. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I think we did the same thing. I just think, I just think now it's more visible. Yeah. Right? I think so. Yeah. It's, you know. it's just, it's interesting. We had VHS, MTV, yeah. Yeah. videos, yeah. Walkmans, yep. Ghetto Blasters. Yeah. They have tablets, yep. iPods, MP3 players, um, f- like crazy phones. Crazy phones. Crazy phones. You know. And it's just, it's amazing. All the technology, the computers, but the it's just evolved. internet, and everything, the Googles and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But it's just evolved. Yeah, it's that's crazy. Why, that's why I think I'm like a really good blending into the millennial. But do you, <laughs> but do you think, and this is what makes me wonder, do you think we're making them grow up too soon? No. Why? Because we're throwing all this stuff because they have access to things earlier in life well, what than do you want them, we would be. Well, what do you want them to be? Like, do you want them to just be like, like, like they live in a bubble no. and then they're not prepared for the world? Yes, Lisa. I want people to walk around in a bubble. Well, sounds like it's meth. They need to, <laughs> the, the world, it, this is their world. Yes, this is true. Right. And I guess if you walk around being naive to so many things, things are bound to happen. Right? Yeah. Then they're going to be caught off guard. True. So I think that, I think that they need to be, I think that they're informed because we live in a world of information, Samantha. This is true, Lisa. right? So, so they have that at their fingertips. Whereas, when with our generation, right, you were only informed if you happen to be like me and like the news. True. Other than that, and I'm still not that person. No, right? So you tell me what's going on. I do. <laughs> I tell you the news. <laughs> what, right? what was the joke? I get my news from you. Get your news from much music, <laughs> and I get my news from 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 the national, right? <laughs> All right, so very well round. It round it well rounds yeah. us. Oh, e news. Yeah, you get. <laughs> yeah, you get right. You know, you have like TMZ, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. I have CNN. But you know what? It's funny because like Generation X, which is us. Yeah. We we work hard. So do the millennials. Yes. They're hardworking yeah. kids, and but they, I think, us at our age, we strive for more work balance. What do you mean? Balance like a work balance life. Like, yeah, 
family work yeah. needs to be balanced. Yeah. Not so much work, not, you know? Yeah. And I think our parents, the baby boomers, were very much work centric. They, they had were, to. They had to work hard and yeah. that's all they thought about. And, and they we're had not, to, they we're had not, to yeah. put meat and potatoes on the table. Meat and potatoes, right? But, it's, but, but the millennials are striving to have a really creative, yeah. you know, trying to do work that is more, they feel passionate about, yeah. which is not necessarily the thought process for the baby boomers or even us. Oh, when not we even us. When we first started out working. We just started working. Because we needed the money. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So now... Whereas I think with a millennial, they're like, I think a millennial is like, I'm not, do I'm not doing that. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to do it unless it speaks to me. Yeah. And yeah. it yeah. needs to speak to me. You know, and then, and I'm sure if you're like the millennial mom, you're like, it needs to speak to you soon. Yeah. Because right? you need money. Because you need some money, right? So, so millennial moms, that's what I'm thinking. If you're a millennial mom, you're probably thinking, needs to speak to you soon. Yeah. Right? Because I think you still need a job. Yeah. Right? Because you still need a job. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think we're in okay hands. I think we are. Right? But I was curious about them. And that's why I wanted us to talk about it. See, Lisa, you had fun. Samantha, I'm one of them. <laughs> no, you're And not. I'm aging like a millennial, too. <laughs> right? Yes. You look so young. I know. I know. <laughs> it's the body lotion. Oh, like, <laughs> Jergens is not a face lotion. Actually, it's not Jergens that I use. I checked it. It's Vaseline body lotion. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, even, like, better. Right? <laughs> hurts my heart well samantha a lot of things you do hurt my heart <laughs> so i'm just saying you know here's something maybe i think that friends of our podcast aren't going to know about in saskatoon right now or saskatchewan we have a real epidemic real bad thing happening with the tent caterpillars oh good god they're everywhere they're everywhere right? and it comes it's cyclical and i don't know it might be in other parts of canada in the states i don't mm-hmm. know right but it's cyclical and and it's disgusting and I get that they're God's creatures, but you know what? Everything's God, God's creatures. And friends of the podcast, I have to share this story. So, so my friend Linda, who I work with, mm-hmm. right? She works next door to me, and she lives out in an acreage. And she showed me a picture of all of their tent caterpillars, and no fault of theirs. You showed them to me. Yeah, and guess they're what? Disgusting. I have PTSD by proxy. <laughs> I have post traumatic stress disorder. By proxy. No, you don't. Yes, I do, because I saw the picture, and it was so horrible. It's disgusting, though. Like, they're so nasty. Yeah. Ugh. But event- I think they're supposed to die off soon, though. You think so? Yeah, it's coming to an yeah. end. The cycle. You know. But it's gross. I saw those pictures. Yeah. I had to get that off my chest. It makes me itchy when you say. I know, right now, right? right now Great. You're awesome. Like, Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome, Samantha. Now I'm itchy. You're welcome. Okay, but I have, I have something I need to get off my chest, though. Okay. I did... I felt really guilty about oh, well, yesterday. Oh, I know where this is going, uh, friends. We went out for dinner. Friends, we were horrible and didn't even know it. Well, and we went to our, our favorite barbecue place here yeah. in Saskatoon, Schreier's. Schreier's. They're awesome. It's awesome. Best barbecue. They let you take the big barbecue sauce <laughs> to the table. Yeah, that's Lisa so loves good. that because yeah. it's all about the sauce. All about the sauce. And uh, we were sitting there, and I thought they closed at eight. And all of a sudden... And I went with that. I ran with yeah, that. Yeah, well, because you, 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 you just believed me. Yeah. <laughs> Blindly, for some yeah. odd reason. So we're talking about the podcast, and we're eating, we're chatting, whatever. And all of a sudden, she it looks like she's starting to get ready to close. And <laughs> table chairs are going up, and all this kind of stuff. And it's and like, like quarter after seven. I don't understand this. Like, why is she doing this? Yeah. So I went up to get more <laughs> pop, because I was still thirsty. Yep. Sat down, and then we're like... No, she's and now she's doing it around us, and yeah. I'm like, well, we should go. So we left, yeah. And we were like, oh, I wonder. And then you were like, are you sure they closed at eight? Yeah. So then I look. Oh fuck, they closed at seven. They closed at seven. Oh my god, I kept them. What? We were twenty five minutes. We late. were those people. Ugh. We were those people. And then you know what's so funny? Let's just. It's like a full circle moment that we're about to have here, friends. The young lady who was we who was like who was like running this running the the Shriers that day. She was like, she was a millennial. She was. And it was so funny because I'm sure in true millennial fashion, she went to the back kitchen, took out her smartphone and like bitched about us to all of her friends. Stupid fat girls are still here. That girl got up and had another <laughs> glass of pop. <laughs> that girl's just sitting and talking. Right. So I'm sure, right. I'm sure like, oh my God, she like, she, oh, I felt, we felt For so sure. bad. Yeah. So bad. So when we discovered that. We went back and gave her a $5 tip. And I said, I'm really sorry. I honestly thought you guys closed at 8. 
go have a beer. Go have a beer. <laughs> go have a beer. We are not those people. We are not those. We really aren't. We aren't. I felt really, and I used to waitress for like over a decade. Yeah. I was a waitress. Samantha, we advocate in re- the world of retail. We advocate. Don't come in at ten to nine. No, because everyone right? hates you. Everybody at 10 hates to you nine. at ten to nine. I don't care who the hell you are, yeah, people. I hate you. Ten to nine. Don't walk in. Yeah. How about you take that ten minutes, uh-huh. drive home, yeah. come back the next day. Come back the next day. Because guess what? Day. Lisa, the millennial, <laughs> is gonna bitch text her friend <laughs> that you're in my place at ten to nine you are too. Not a millennial. I am a millennial. No, you're not. I am. I'm just like my girls, Rayel and Callie. <laughs> oh my Rayel, God. Callie and Lisa. No, no. <laughs> No. The three of no. us. We're like millennial friends. No, you're not. Me and my little millennials. No. Yeah. Samantha, no. I have a nice shake my head moment. Okay. And it's about you. Oh. And it happened yesterday. Why? Okay. So, friends of the podcast, Samantha's done her best to expose the fact that I'm picky. Okay? You are. I am. But I wasn't yesterday. <laughs> Hence my shake my head moment. <laughs> right? So, I... Right? <sighs> we're, we get in the car. Crap. What do you want for supper? Where do you want to go for supper? I don't care. Because I don't care. All I knew is I wasn't picking. I don't care. I'm not picking. So so, so then started my... Then quickly started my... I shake my head moment. Samantha would be like, McDonald's? Sure. Burger King? Sure. Ricky's? Sure. Chinese? Sure. KFC? Sure. Pizza? Sure. And I'm like... And then all of a sudden... And she's still just driving aimlessly. Friends, she's just driving. And I'm shaking my head. And all of a sudden I had to say to her, you know what? I'm a little bit choked right now. Because I don't just give out the shures. <laughs> and I was like, sure, 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 sure to your right, sure to your left, sure, sure, sure. A sure over here and a sure over here. And she didn't take the opportunity to to take advantage of my good nature whatsoever. Not one sure. You could have been like, you want to eat like shit on a stick? Sure. And we could have done that. Because that's how I was yesterday. Okay, drama queen. Guess what, Samantha? Those shures, they're just not coming around again, Vera, for a long, long time. Well, this is true. I don't dish them out all I, the time. I did miss my opportunity. Yeah, I don't... Di- I, the shares are gone. And that was my shake my head moment. I'm like, dude, why are you not taking me up on all this? My shares. <sighs> Sorry, Lisa. Okay, it's fine. Uh-huh. I shake my head. Uh-huh. I was shaking my head. Uh-huh. Still shake it a little bit right now. Oh, no, stop. Just it. saying. Um, I have and I shake my head. Okay. Not quite as apparently as Mine was exciting like, as yours uh, was. Well, most things aren't. Uh-huh. Most things aren't. Yeah. I worked a very, I worked an overnight shift at my job yep. because we had a big project to get done, which could be done during the day. And I didn't get home till after five. All I wanted to do is sleep. Makes sense. Sleeping was rudely woken up. Oh. Yeah. I lived beside a high school. Yeah. Apparently they were grading the parking lot. Samantha, you know what the bad thing is? Is that, you know, life goes on in the day. I know. And you know what? I hated it. Every minute. Hated it. And I'm like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Yeah. Why are you doing this now? Today, the di- the the only day that I'm gonna have to do an overnight. This is what you do to me. Yeah. I was very choked, and then I thought, don't get worked up. You'll never get back. You'll to never sleep. get back to sleep. <laughs> exactly. So, I went back to sleep, but I was not impressed. No. And then I worried because your husband does this every day. My husband's a nighttime husband. Our whole lives been a nighttime worker, and he lives in an apartment building. Yep. And he wakes up. He wakes up fine. But I mean, I think that, but I think that's that he, crazy. Yeah. But he, he, I think it's just his nature. Really? Right? Cause he can, he, can he sleep through anything? Well, sometimes, but I think what happens is I think, cause I'm at work during the day. So I think that if he's having a tough time sleeping, he'll get up for a bit oh, okay. and then he'll go back to sleep okay. and then he'll get up for like, I think he does. I think he does that. But it's funny because even though he works nights, he does 99% of all things. Right? This is true. Yeah. So he still, I'm like, he like, he like gets up, he gets up. Gets home at eight o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning. He gets up, does groceries. Different day, gets up, does laundry. Different day, gets up, does housework. My day off on Sunday, I get up, I eat, I sit in a chair. That's my day. That's pretty sad. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, God, I should do more. But you've already done it all. I really appreciate your husband now. I know he's a good guy, hey? He's just a tall, tall drink of handsome. There you go. That's how I see him. Just cute as a, cute as a button, Mike Gibson is. All right. Okay, enough about us. Samantha? Well, because we've come to the end of our podcast. We have. We absolutely have. But we're going to tell you what our next topic is. All right. (laughs) You guys are going to be really surprised because we were really surprised, (laughs) actually. We We discovered something. Yeah. It was kind of really shocking. The next time, we're going to discuss what it is that we have in common. Yeah. Because as friends, we're not sure. We're not. There's not really a whole lot. (laughs) 
There's really, there's, there's really not a whole lot. And so this week, Samantha, I will compile my list. And I will compile mine. As the week goes on. And then we'll compare notes. Okay. And I don't even know if we'll be friends after next week. It's hard to say. Right? <laughs> you know, or it could be like a good marriage where it's been this long. Might as well just keep on trucking. We'll be like the baby boomers who just stick it out. We just stick it out, right? <laughs> Friendship, too much. Too, too much. much work. Too much work. Might as well just stay with it. Right? It's not worth it's just not worth the hassle of ending it. This is true. Right? Alright, that's it, man. Alright, Samantha, always a pleasure. Of course it is. Alright, goodbye.